AP college football writer Ralph Russo released an article that got picked up by the New York Times yesterday citing that BYU and Army are a couple of teams that are feeling a bit anxious going into bowl selection Sunday because they don't have an immediate tie And He joins us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Ralph, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Hey, guys. How are you today? Great. Thank you, first and foremost, for giving us uh, a juicy topic based on your article yesterday. We needed something midweek. Well, I, I would say, um, you know, I went into it thinking that maybe BYU and Army were the two teams that drew me to it, especially Army being nine wins, about to be ten wins again, thinking, boy, they, they could be in a really precarious position. And the more you talk to people about it, the more you, you realize, well, it's a weird spot for, they, for them to be in. They're definitely not guaranteed anything, but I think what I came out thinking is, and what I ended up writing is, I think Army and BYU will be okay in the end here. I think this is going to be a story with a happy ending, ending, even though there may be some nervous moments. Wouldn't it be messed up if a ranked team didn't get into a bowl game, especially Army? That would be so weird, right? Well, that's it. I mean, they're the number 23 team in the country. They, they could be 10-2 and two if they beat Navy, and Navy's been terrible this year. So, you know, there's a good chance that that's going to happen. Army has never had an 11-win season in the history of its program. And wow. as you remember, Army was pretty good back in the 40s and 30s. Um, they could have their first 11-win program if they can get to a bowl game. It's not just if they can win the bowl game, if they can get to the bowl game. So the optics of that, especially considering, it's, again, it's Army. This is a, a program that has a huge national following. So the optics of that is certainly would be odd and would not speak well for the bowl system. But again, I think because it's such a big brand like BYU with a national following, I think the, the sense is that bowl organizers are going to make this happen. Ralph, I'm looking at teams like Miami, Ohio, and Southern Miss, and Louisiana Monroe, and Wyoming, and based on what happened last year with teams in Conference USA and the Sun Belt being left out, I am hard-pressed to believe that that bowl committees wouldn't go the same route and, and leave some of those teams out. So if BYU and Army get in, who who's not going to get in this year? Yeah, I, I suspect Wyoming is in big trouble. Um, I suspect Louisiana Monroe is in big trouble. Um, you know, these are schools that, first of all, I think that the, what I've been told is they really are going to try to prioritize record. In other words, at least within the conference, right? And so if, if a conference like the MAC has a 7-5 and five team, they're going to accommodate that 7-5 and five team before the 6-6 six and six team. In the Sun Belt, same thing. Uh, you know, a Louisiana Monroe with six, with six wins is going to be the last team accommodated. I think the thing where it gets a little tricky is essentially when you don't have a contract, when you're an independent like BYU or an Army, you know, BYU has the fallback of the ESPN contract, yeah. and ESPN has 14, 14 owned and operated bowls. And while they are contracted to spot, BYU's spot was supposed to be the poinsettia bowl, and that went away this year, actually two years ago. So that's why BYU is in a little bit of a precarious spot. You still have these games spoken for. But if you start doing the numbers and, and graphing it out, you realize, oh, the AAC is a good chance of not filling its bowl. You mentioned the Frisco Bowl. I think that's an AAC bowl that could come open. Uh, if the Big 12 sends Oklahoma to the playoff, that's how the Armed Forces Bowl comes open. It looks like there could be an SEC Bowl open that could uh, because they could have so many teams in the playoff in New Year's Six. So, but you have to wait until those bowls – are no longer spoken for. And that's why it gets tricky with Army and BYU because you, they kind of have to sit around. I was talking to Tom Homo, the, the BYU athletic director, and he said, you know, yeah, I'm pretty confident this is going to work out. But, you know, there is a possibility that if all the pieces are put in the puzzle, it could be a problem for us. And that's why he ended up spending last weekend watching, you know, games from all over the country and, and hoping that Virginia Tech, you know, Virginia could fall on a fumble and beat Virginia Tech. <laughs> when, when you're watching, like, random Sunbelt and Mac games, you know you're really invested in the bowl <laughs> season, right? Ralph, there's a few schools of thought here with bowl games. Back in the day, it used to be really special to go to a bowl game. And now it's, you know, entertainment and there's a ton of money involved in it. What, how do you feel about the number of bowl games in college football? 
Well, I would say this. There's a ton of money involved in the big bowl games. There's not a ton of money involved in the small ones. And the small ones, they're basically TV programming. But I will say this. There's a whole – there's a lot more of college football that is has no chance of playing in the playoff. And that doesn't necessarily mean because of the conference. I mean, like, if you're Indiana, you're in the Big Ten, but you're never going to play in the playoff, right? That's just your program is not built to do that. So just take all those – teams in the power five conferences and just take like swaths of teams in the group of five conferences what are they playing for well they're playing for a good bowl and in some cases they're just playing for a bowl right if you're a team that hasn't gone to a bowl game in in a million years like just getting to six and six and going to a bowl is a big deal so one of the things I think we forget about with the bowl system is it provides like a goal and it keeps fans interested in their teams who otherwise would just sort of abandon. Like, I mean, like there would be no interest in a lot of these games down the stretch if there weren't these small bowl games. And again, those are teams that are never getting into the playoff. So if you take that away, what are you doing with two thirds of FBS? What are their goals? Ralph Russo, award-winning and longtime AP college football writer with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, Ralph, stare into your crystal ball because I know you see all things in there as to how all of this bowl situation is going to shake out. Where's the best fit for BYU given the circumstances? You know, you mentioned Frisco, and that certainly comes to mind. I will, I will beg off this. I am not great at putting the bowl picture together. <laughs> I think that there are a lot of moving pieces and – you have to sort of study it pretty closely and do some reporting on it. And what I was trying to get at is, will BYU end up in a bowl? And I came to the conclusion that, yeah, they're probably pretty safe. As, a po- as, as far as where, I'm going to leave that to some of the other experts. But I think Frisco, again, and knowing that the AAC and the Big 12 are sort of interesting hot spots, I think those are places to look at. So look at the AAC-affiliated bowls. Look at the... Big 12 affiliated bowls and maybe keep an eye on the Mountain West affiliated bowls because there's a good chance the Mountain West. Well, actually, I'll take that back because the Mountain West is going to have teams in line, but the Mountain West could end up having, you know, that's where Wyoming could get in. But I'd say the Big 12 and the, the AAC and maybe the SEC are the places to watch for openings, for possible openings. Okay, this weekend is quite possibly the most relevant weekend in college football because we have all of the conference championship games with that said, who do you think will make it in Sunday to the college football playoff? You know, I, I've got my picks on the wire already, so I, I kind of am obligated to go with what I've already got in print. And I've got all the favorites winning this week. And if all the favorites win, I think that leaves us with Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Oklahoma. Um, now we usually get some kind of a curveball, not necessarily on championship week. It's been a while since we've had one of those drastic, you know, curveballs on championship weekend. I think really since Ohio State, you know, jumped a couple of Big 12 teams in 2014. Uh, you know, it would seem to me the biggest hot spot is big, the Big 12, where Oklahoma has been so faulty on defense. You know, can they beat Texas, avenge their loss in the regular season to Texas? But I, do, I think if they do, it will play out that you'll have those conference champions, Big 12, ACC, SEC, and Notre Dame. And, and the big question becomes, the really intriguing question becomes, what happens if Alabama loses? Do you end up with two SEC teams in? My inclination is you probably do. Ralph Russo, AP college football writer, always bringing it. Nice to have you back on the program, my friend. Uh, we appreciate the insight. And, again, uh, great article that uh, you released yesterday uh, specifically on the teams that could be left out in the bowl scenario. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, guys. Ralph Russo on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.